Hello, my name is Frank Schuler, and I'm the product owner for CA Mainframe Application Tuner. We're here today to talk about how to improve application performance management utilizing CA Mainframe Application Tuner on Mac. How does CA Mainframe Application work, and how do we know if it's right for you? So typically, customers are going to utilize MAP to save on MIPS costs, to save on software licensing costs, to better handle chargeback costs, to improve, improve overall application performance, and to improve visibility into the right reporting structure for their application performance needs, and to help improve their product integrations throughout their environment. CA MAP is going to help the customer uh, to improve their overall customer experience. It helps them to avoid MIPS costs and to save on cost for software costs. We're going to do this by helping you to, to identify which applications are consuming the most uh, uh, runtime in consuming MIPS. This is going to allow you to save on overall maintenance costs. We have the capability to automate this performance and measurement analysis within MAT. And MAT is also very simple to use and to install. So what is CA MAT? CA MAT is a application performance sampler. It's going to enable uh, performance management teams to quickly identify the root cause of application performance issues in ZOS-based systems. CA MAT provides proactive application performance analysis to help organizations easily improve applications' runtime. CPU consumption and response time. CA MAP provides the application view of performance for system and performance programmers, application developers, and database administrators. So MAP is a sampler as opposed to an overall monitor. Because we're a sampler, we're going to target a specific batch or online environment that is of concern to us. By only looking at the application of concern, we dramatically reduce the amount of overhead that is needed to determine what the performance degradation is as opposed to utilizing a full system monitor to accomplish this. The performance analysis uh, cycle that MAP participates in, it's going to identify tuning opportunities. It's going to help you to identify performance trends. It's going to suggest applications to target. And it will also collect in-depth performance metrics as part of the performance analysis cycle. How is CA MAT used? CA MAT is used to improve application performance by observing and sampling applications to identify high CPU usage, long wait times, and slow transaction response times. These are the typical areas where your application is going to have performance bottlenecks. MAT is going to provide data to identify the root cause of performance and efficiencies in ZOS-based applications. How does it work? So MAT is, a, is installed uh, within the environment. When we did decide to measure a particular application or an online region, we're going to invoke MAT. We're going to, uh, because MAT is, is a sampler, it, it uses a, a sampling process, disabled interrupts uh, that allows us to integrate and to see the actual SRB uh, where, where, uh, where the performance is occurring against, and we're going to monitor that during the MAT session. We're going to see the, the overall step live and the job live, the proc live, et cetera, that the application is consuming against. We're going to keep that information within our measurement data files. So we watch the target address space. We sample for a period of time. And then we're going to leave, and we're going to create the measurement data files that contains the information that we observed during the sampling process. CA MAT supports over 20 different subsystems and languages in ZOS-based environments, so traditional CICS regions and IMS regions down to DB2, IDMS. We're going to see vSAM, COBOL calls, 
So whatever ZOS-based subsystem that your application is utilizing against, MAP's going to be able to observe it and report it on it and tell you specifically where in your application you're making that call to that particular subsystem or language. CA Mainframe Application Tuner uh, provides a, a graphical user interface that is available in both web and Eclipse-based plugin formats. Within the GUI, we provide complete ISPF functionality. And that's going to allow customers to utilize the GUI to create a monitor, to edit a monitor, invoke a monitor, and to analyze a monitor. So everything that you can do within the ISPF traditional 3270 screens, you can do within the MAP GUI. MAP also contains Performance Management Assistant, or PMA. What, what this is going to allow customers to do to identify specific transactions that are affecting overall performance or, or to tell you a specific batch job step that, that is, is up and acting up. So a lot of customers aren't aware of, of degradation that is occurring. They may know one or, one or two traditional problem areas that they want to uh, take a look at, but oftentimes they, they, they may be unaware of a transaction or a batch job process that is consuming a lot of time. So the, uh, by utilizing the performance management assistance of PMA, we're going to automate that process and start to identify some of these, these unknown areas for you. A lot of times what Matt is going to help you to do is, is uh, uh, to help your staff to identify uh, at the at the enterprise level and, and do these specific transaction programs and database calls that can that consume the most resource. Better automation across your full environment is going to help to uh, quickly utilize Matt to identify and respond to performance opportunities. So within PMA, we're going to automate the discovery of of the performance process within your environment. PMA can help you detect threshold violations based on overall runtime, CPU, service units, and, and EXCPs or IOs. So we'll, we'll be able to establish specific thresholds based on this criteria. And when your application uh, goes over that particular threshold, we're going to notify you, take note of that, and, and automatically generate a MAP measurement as a result of that. A lot of folks are going to use PMA to identify new or change modules and trigger measurements as a result of that. So if you're introducing a change to a mission critical application, a lot of folks are going to use MAT and PMA in particular to monitor that, that module when it's changed as part of their change process to make sure that we haven't introduced any new inefficiencies. Another, another way to utilize PMA is to, is to establish user-defined thresholds and measurements for specific groups of, of selected job steps. So you may have a, a particular online application or, or a batch application that contains a, a, a groups of transactions or a batch processes that you want to uh, set up PMA to, to monitor that on an ongoing basis for the various thresholds. We're going to also be able to use PMA to detect out of patent spikes and triggers within real time or the next ex execution with, uh, within, within these programs. So those runaway programs you know, that, that are uh, beginning to uh, uh, creep up and, and cause degradation issues, or if you have a runaway uh, program that may be in a loop, PMA can utilize those, those threshold reporting to identify those and help you resolve those. PMA is going to allow you to track your applications by learning its, its behavior over time. So uh, PMA is going to track the applications there as they execute and, and, and to establish the baseline. Based on your thresholds, alerts will be generated. PMA can then trigger uh, um, a, a CA mat measurement as a result of those thresholds. It's going to help you to identify those transactions that are impacting overall performance. 
It's going to also identify uh, batch jobs whose run times are, are increasing. So PMA extracts key information from that and prioritizes based on CPU time, elapsed time, service units, and the XCPs. So what we'll do today is we'll continue along our discussion with the Mac GUI and give you a brief demo. And basically what we want to stress is that within the GUI, it's going to make Mac easy to use by uh, giving you the complete ISPF functionality capability within the Mac GUI. So uh, the Mac GUI is going to allow you to be able to create a monitor, to invoke a monitor, and also within Mac B11, we did some enhancements where we can allow you to do filtering, delete, scheduling, and also we're going to be providing a dashboard summary. So at this point, we'll switch it over and give you a brief demo of, of what that functionality looks like. Okay. Uh, so hello. Um, my name is Václav Brunhofer from the Prag Development Team, and I'll give you a brief overview of the GUI and the features we've uh, been working on for the last couple months. So uh, <clears throat> what you see now is, uh, is the graphically the interface for our Mad back, uh, backend uh, client. So uh, the main view consists of a monitor tree view, which where you can see all the profiles. The, these profiles are loaded from the GIF that's being used also by the ISPF client. So you, uh, all the profiles you've created in the ISPF are displayed here in the list. Then there's the main part of the view uh, where we open the analysis for each profile, for each profile, and uh, error log view uh, down below that displays the possible errors and warnings. So uh, let's start with creating a profile, uh, which you can do by uh, right-click and selecting a monitor here. What you see is a, is a uh, new monitor definition dialog, which, uh, which uh, gives you an option to fill in all the fields that you fill in the ISPF client. I'll create a sample profile here. Let's call it like test 25. Uh, you can put a description there. And uh, enter a job name you want to monitor. Let's run COP01 and a system. OK, I think that's enough now. You hit OK. If you scroll all the way down, you can see uh, it was created here. If I switch back to the SPF client, Okay, um, what I'm trying to show you now is, is the thing that the profile that was added in, in the GUI has been added to the GIF file and can be displayed in the ISPF client as well. Okay, you can see the profile uh, is also displayed in the ISPF with the same values as in the GUI. Okay, what I can show you now is that if you modify anything in the, in the ISPF, it gets reflected in the GUI. Okay, now I show you the Edit monitor feature, you can edit any profile in the GUI as well. So I'll change it back. So now we have an existing profile here, and uh, we can invoke it from the GUI. So now invoke the profile. The status goes to waiting. 
and uh, I'll submit the job. Now we can see the status change to active, so now the uh, job is being monitored. So we'll wait until the job is finished. It should be in a, in a second. What happens in the background is that the GUI sends an invoke through a tune call to the MET server to initiate the monitoring. After the monitoring is finished, mainframe server creates a, an XML file. So it creates both the monitor data set and an XML file, which is stored in the USS. And, and the GUI then uses the, the XMLs for displaying analysis in the, in the, in the GUI. The post-processing status means that the XML is being created. So now you see it's inactive again, and now we can see the analysis. You can see all the views that are in the ISPF, time view, code view, delay view, everything works the same way. Uh, you have the auto navigation by double click here or you can right click to see the options for each line. I think this is uh, the level of detail I, want, I wanted to get to. So this is invoke and analyzing of the invoke profile. Next feature I want to show you is the filtering. We used to have filtering for each table in the in the GUI using this dialog. So you could basically, in the same way as in the ISPF, you could enter some values here to get a filter. So if you put a profile run cop, <coughs> the table gets filtered. What we implemented, because the customers wanted something quicker, uh, so we implemented this quick filtering dialog that you just basically start typing in and it automatically starts searching the table for, uh, for all the matches. If you just type here, it search through all the, searches through all the columns of the table below and uh, any line which, have, uh, which has a match in any of the columns is displayed. You can do more complicated filtering here by using this drop down. So now I selected, I just I'm just looking for the run cop for uh, in a profile column. I can apply even more filters at once. So let's say I want I want all the profiles that start with run who have which have uh, more runs than two. So here we go. You can de uh, you can uh, delete each of the filters by clicking this button here or you can clear all at once. So this is filtering. I think it's used very much among the among the team and it helps a lot for searching uh, searching the profiles. So especially when the list of the profiles is very long. Now we're coming to a delete. We have two types of delete in the GUI. We can delete either one history measurement I'll sh demonstrate it also again on the test 25 profile we created. So now you see the history. There's only one that was from the measurement before. Here you have the delete option, so you can this way you can delete the history item from the list. Yeah, it's gone. What we implemented this increment was an ability to delete a profile, which was not possible before. So, so now you can delete monitor profile. You're asked if uh, with or without the data sets. Now we can see there the test 25 profiles there any, uh, no more. So this is... Um, the delete that also got implemented. Then we have uh, implemented uh, scheduling capabilities. 
which already were in the in the ISPF client. It it was pretty uh, a little hidden under an administration uh, option. So this is a schedule. These are the schedules that you can add into the uh, into the ISPF client. And now we can uh, now we have these uh, schedules listed in the GUI as well. So that was the first part to display, and uh, then we implemented uh, an ability to add the schedule, copy a schedule, edit a schedule, and delete a schedule, which is uh, which is which are, which are the options that the ISPF client provides. If you uh, click at schedule, you're provided with a dialog, uh, similar dialog to the ISPF client. We enhanced it a bit with uh, calendars here, so you can pick the dates from the calendar, which is more user-friendly. You can edit all the fields as in the ISPF client and the schedule is added. How this works is the same way it works in the ISPF. You can, when you edit a profile and go to an additional tab, you can, you can assign the schedule to a profile. What it means is now, based on the, on the definition of the schedule, it's uh, the time when the job actually can be monitored is limited to the period specified in the schedule. Again, you're able to edit the schedule or copy a schedule or delete the schedule. <clears throat> and all the last but not least is the dashboard. It's really uh, has been finished uh, recently. There was a <clears throat> requirement to have a to have something uh, that would display a brief information on the analysis, since the analysis itself is quite quite complex. So we implemented we implemented a new view, a dashboard view, which consists of uh, brief information on the job and job step and program monitored, the main, the most important time values, two charts. In the left chart, we display the five most consuming delays. So it's just a graphical representation of the delay view. So we display the five, we display the active and weight values for the five most consuming delay types. The chart is interactive. If you hover the bar, you're, you can see the delay type and you can see the exact numbers of of uh, active and weight samples. So you can click click on the bars. This triangle above um, just shows you which which bar is selected at the moment. And here in the right chart you can see the detail on on uh, five most consuming modules. Uh, of that particular delay type. If you hover the bar, there's a table down. Uh, the, the table down below displays the details. It's basically the first five lines of the delay view. Uh, of the, it depends, but it's the auto navigation table that you would get when double clicking the delay view lines. So that's the table. So the left chart is interactive. The right chart displays the details on the delay type. And uh, I'll try to find, yes, if you have a caller ID information for that delay type, there's a triangle uh, icon here, which you can click to expand. And now you can see the caller ID information for that particular line. And uh, that concludes our demonstration of the Mac GUI uh, presentation. And as we said, the Mac GUI is primarily designed to increase the ease of use and make it a little bit easier for both um, experienced and novice Mac users. When, when CA um, SysView detects a problem, it, it can automatically in, initiate a, a map measurement as a result of that. So we have full integration within CA SysView. 
This integration en enables operations to drill down to, to the actual line of code within the SQL of the, of the, of the, of the COBOL statement where the problem is occurring. So this allows you to uh, utilize your, your uh, SysView-based uh, monitoring uh, opportunities to, to get to the root cause of the application. CA can be invoked under multiple circumstances within, within SysView. Uh, perhaps a threshold violation is occurring, and we can utilize SysView to automatically trigger the CA measurement. Perhaps a, a system program cannot determine why a subsystem is, cons is consuming an excessive amount of CPU and invokes CA map to determine potential application level issues. As a result of the, the, the resulting CA uh, mat measurement that is, that is generated as part of the C, CA SysView integration, we can utilize a lot of the internal reporting within MAT, such as code view, delay view, and transaction overview to help isolate specific problem areas of the code or the application. A typical case study we, we saw here, uh, we had a an insurance company that was experiencing a, a number of performance issues. They utilized CA MAT to op optimize their mainframe application as part of their initiative. Uh, this resulted in improved service levels for over 3 million of their customers. They used CA MAT to cut daily batch processing time from 14 hours down to 7 hours as, as, as a result of looking at the overall batch processing and making some tuning and, and some processing changes. They, all, they also utilized CA MAT to resolve some critical online performance issues. They had rolled out a new IMS online application that would eventually be rolled out to over 2,500 different offices. However, uh, when they when they rolled this out, they re, they, they they quickly reached 100% utilization in their LPAR after converting only 70 of of their offices into the application. So, using CA mainframe application tuner, they were able to uh, reduce the contention on that LPAR down to 80% in in just two weeks by by identifying specific transactions that were causing them the, their performance issues. They optimized and tuned them, and as a result, they were able to migrate um, another 380 offices using the existing mainframe resources. That's a typical way that, that customers are going to utilize uh, CA MAT as part of their mainframe performance opportunities. We encourage you to stay connected with, with us and within uh, CA MAT. We are committed to the agile development uh, process here at CA, so we'd like to invite you to take the opportunity to influence the MAT ongoing product development by providing us with feedback and validation of, of, of what we're working on. And there's two ways you, you can participate in this. Uh, consider joining the CA communities or our ideation process, and, and that's available on communities.ca.com. And that allows you to uh, submit ideas for enhancements or suggestions. You can vote on common I uh, uh, on ideas that are out there that we are cu uh, currently uh, considering for our development process. We're going to review those ideas and uh, on an ongoing basis and 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 and, and respond to those and and put them uh, and schedule them into our production backlog. The other way to, to participate is to consider joining our customer validation process. You, you can participate in that to register, and that's going to allow you to see actual live demos and end of sprint reviews within our development teams within MAT and, and all CA products. Uh, th this is a private area uh, that requires non-disclosures, uh, members only, online community. But we're going to, a lot of customers uh, enjoy this because it gets to directly influence how the product is developed and what features are contained within that. So we provide pre-release on-site uh, testing and support. Uh, any issues, you know, uh, uh, will be uh, uh, highly prioritized. So again, we we, we 
invite you to consider participating in that uh, program by visiting validate.ca.com. So thank you for your time, and, and uh, we, we hope you, f you found this uh, information useful. We, we all, as always, we, we welcome the opportunity to work with you going forward, and, uh, and, and appreciate your time.